around 2011, we started on a pilot program to, to take fecal sludge and recover resources from fecal sludge. So the concept that we had in mind was, uh, you know, when people talk about fecal sludge conversion, they mostly talk about recovery of biogas, which, is, which contains methane along with other gases, CO2, moisture and other gases. So we wanted to do something which was slightly higher value, so we thought about bio, uh, biodiesel instead of, in addition to biogas. And so, uh, uh, in about a year, we actually, uh, I designed a, a pilot scale process. The total volume of this process was 120,000 liters, 120 cubic meters. And uh, this was designed to accept fecal sludge from 5,000 to 10,000 people per day. And the objective was to, uh, uh, was to develop a process that could make not just biogas, but precursors of biogas, which could then be used to, uh, uh, towards uh, biodiesel production. And uh, we ran the system for about slightly less than a year in, in Kumasi in Ghana, in the field. And this was, uh, uh, we took the results and then uh, we used the results to, cal to develop and calibrate a bioprocess model which will allow other users uh, to, to, uh, to translate the results that we have into their own designs, into their own systems for biogas production or biodiesel production or other, other, uh, uh, other end products as well. Yeah, so see, fecal, fecal sludge as with other, what we have so-called waste streams are basically organic carbon, uh, the nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, and there could be other constituents depending on uh, what the streams are, where the streams are coming from. But assuming that it's mostly organic carbon, nitrogen and phosphorus, uh, organic carbon itself can go to biogas, for instance, biodiesel, for instance, but also a lot of other commodity chemicals. So in our lab, we are, uh, uh, we are beginning the process of looking at other, uh, other commodity chemicals, bioplastics for instance. Uh, we are doing this in New York City with real streams. We are doing this at small scale because we want to fit these systems into buildings uh, for processing, but we are working with real streams. So we're working with real food waste from uh, the cafeteria at Columbia University and the restaurants around Columbia University. And then we are looking uh, to, make, uh, to make bioplastics and we are also looking at hydrogen gas as another source of energy. And then we also focus on uh, the, the precursors of methane, uh, which is what we call volatile fatty acids, like acetic acid, vinegar for instance. We take these molecules and we make basically chemicals from them. And then that's just the carbon. And then the nitrogen and phosphorus we can recover in the, for fertilizer use and, and agriculture. So I would say the list is very, very extensive. We are just scratching the surface and even identifying what we can do. Yeah, so we, we decided to go directly to pilot scale with this process, which was 120,000 liters uh, without doing any experimental work. So that by itself was very challenging, but also very stimulating. And we had to overcome many of these challenges right, right in, the real, in the pilot system in real world. And so one of the principal challenges we faced was uh, mixing, mixing uh, these reactors. And typically, uh, 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 you could expend more energy by putting in mechanical mixing, and we didn't want to do that, uh, continuously at least. And then we came up with a completely new configuration, the step-feed fermentation that I can tell you later on which also addresses some of these challenges uh, with, uh, with, respect to, uh, with respect to mixing. Uh, the high degree of variability in fecal sludge char uh, characteristics was another challenge because then the biological process was subjected to this variability and it had to handle uh, this variability. That's on the, technological, uh, on the technology side. One of the principal challenges we faced was this was a brand new uh, process, right? And so uh, the scientific knowledge at the time was not even developed fully. Uh, and so this was a real challenge we faced uh, and I'm very happy to say that the local Ghanaian students who are working on this, the local Ghanaian researchers who are working on this, they really, uh, they rose up to this challenge and they were able to uh, learn very rapidly and keep learning on the job and run this, run this project for, for close to a year. Yeah, so, so if we are talking about Let's say animal fat, for instance, that uh, that has uh, that's already enriched in lipids. Lipids are the building molecules of biodiesel. So biodiesel is basically lipids combined with methanol. And so in in uh, streams which are enriched in fats, the fats are already mostly there. You don't have to purify. You don't have to devote so much time to extraction or enriching. Uh, in fecal sludge, uh, in healthy individuals, 
the on a dry weight basis, the lipid content is, I would say, 6 to 10 percent. So you're starting out very, very low to begin with. And so either you just work with that small fraction, and that's where you're stuck with that, or like I mentioned, that the process we have developed is not just looking at, at the inherent lipid fraction. We are taking all the other organics and making them into, transforming them into lipids and then, and then biodiesel. That's, that's a challenge just uh, in terms of the, the chemical composition and the limits uh, that, uh, that then arise. Yes, so the, the concept of step feeding and how it relates to anaerobic fermentation and digestion. So at the heart of what we do is this process of anaerobic fermentation and digestion. So fermentation is basically anaerobically converting uh, organic compounds into uh, volatile fatty acids and producing hydrogen and, and, and a few other compounds. That's fermentation. Production of uh, methane from these compounds is digestion. And so uh, our process was basically a sequence of six reactors in series and then two banks of six reactors in series. So the fecal sludge entered in the first reactor and it just was transferred from one tank to another to another. And so if you can, and we were batch feeding this once every day or once every two days for instance, ultimately once every day. So if you can imagine what is happening, the first tank gets the feed and then it just gets mixed because of the turbulence caused. And after that the sludge is just flowing from one tank to another passively. So in the absence of any external mixing, the fecal sludge is just going to progressively settle more and more in the downstream tanks. And uh, what is the raw material for biogas or bio, uh, bio, biodiesel production? It's the solids, it's the organic, uh, the, right? And so if the solids are settling, there's not much food available, substrate available for that conversion. That's a big limitation. And so what we did in the field uh, was we just put pumps into select reactors and recirculated the sludge once a day because we didn't have any electricity. This was in a dump site, middle of nowhere. So this was a big practical limitation. To overcome this, what we said was, th that's where step feeding comes in. So step feeding basically is you take the influent, feed part of it to the first reactor, part of it to the downstream reactors, and uh, even though you do it once a day, all six reactors are mixed because just, just by the turbulence at which the streams are introduced. And so mixing is very important because it will improve, improved mixing will improve the process efficiency. And step feeding is something that we developed. And uh, the other, the other uh, benefit of step feeding is that it can maximize, if you design this properly, it can maximize both the biogas and biodiesel yields. If you are able to uh, uh, design the step feeding so as to designate certain fractions going into each reactor. So you have a lot more control than just putting it in the first reactor and letting it go. So this is very advantageous. And so this, uh, this is a very novel process uh, and we have, uh, there is a patent pending on this process as well. Yeah, so the, see the entire premise of this pilot activity was to go to biodiesel from fecal sludge and then possibly explore other end products as well. So uh, the obvious benefits of scaling this up would be to really uh, be able to convert fecal sludge into something that can, uh, that can drive, let's say, the conversion process itself. Biodiesel is a very widely applicable fuel, biofuel, uh, bio and that biodiesel can be used to run the system itself. Par could be probably a partial offset, but an offset nonetheless. So that's a big advantage. Uh, in terms of scaling it up, uh, the technology is there. I mean, uh, as I said also, we have taken the results from the field and we have uh, developed this into a mathematical model. And so this model will also allow people to scale it up. And so scale scaling up is, can be achieved in two directions. Either you build a much bigger system or you build many smaller systems, that's the impact is still scaled up. And so what we are doing is not working on developing bigger and bigger systems. What we're doing is we're going the other way and we are putting in systems that run in buildings. And that's what I refer to. So we take food waste from our cafeteria in the, in the university, restaurant waste, and we make, and we combine that with sewage sludge and make biodiesel and fertilizer as well. 